Today, we make a friend in the engine bay. He's big. Wow, he's got some meat to him. I almost run myself over. I'm spinning it slowly and the car's like slowly creeping on me. I'm like, what is it doing? And we break stuff. It's gotta be coming. Maybe this is it? It is. What's up guys, Frank Macaluso here from Garageaholic, giving you another engine swap. Here's my next project, an awesome idea fell into my lap and I wanted to really take the reins on this and work with my new customer on what we are going to do next. Today, we're gonna to be taking some American V8 and put it into a BMW. That's right, we got a 2016 Chevy Camaro SS with the LT1, 455 horsepower, 455 foot-pounds of torque, six-speed TR2020 Tremac transmission, and it's been hit. It's been hit pretty hard, and we gotta figure out how bad the damage really is. So you kinda know, just, just like that. Reliable. That's the Chevy way. Now, we have a V8 LT1, which is the same engine as the C7 Corvette. Um, one of the engines in the C7 Corvette. Um, now that they came out with the C8 mid-engine Corvette, this is the uh, premier engine, other than the LT4 supercharged version, this is the next level down. But it is a fast engine, and it is durable, it is light, it is small, aluminum block, aluminum head. It's got a lot of great features and a lot of reliability. It is the most commonly swapped engine known to man, and we are going to be doing it in a BMW. So let's take a look at the damage. We got a front end collision here. Pretty, pretty bad here. Um, this was an auction car. We bought this at auction, and uh, we feel like we got a pretty good price. If you take a look at the eBay auctions on this, you'll see that they end up going for about nine to 10 grand just for the engine and transmission alone. So we got an entire car for less than that. We can piece it off and help salvage and offset the cost of the project. So we've got a, a banged up front frame rail. We gotta start pulling this out and see where the damage is. Now the car does not start, that's obvious. Why? Because you have a front frame rail pushed up against the accessory belt. Now, I don't know how bad the damage is on this, but we really gotta take a look and start peeling away this onion. Start taking that, taking everything out and really figure out how deep this rabbit hole goes. And we gotta do it quickly. We gotta do it as soon as we can so we can start purchasing parts ahead of time as to have the project move smoothly. Auction car won't start. I'm gonna prove them wrong. We wanna get this thing started. <laughs> before we ever take the engine out. So um, we have to make sure that we have a good engine, that it runs, that it idles, that we don't have any big codes or anything like that that's gonna stop us from moving forward on an engine swap. Make sure that this thing is good as it st sits right now to remove that variable from the actual engine swap. We have no glass broken in this, which is awesome, but we have like 12 airbags. So this car is certainly not salvageable. And for anybody looking for parts, let me know. But for now, all glass is good, so we don't have to deal with broken glass inside the car. So let's, uh, let's, let's jump this thing. All right, so the battery's in here. That's where the battery is. I think that if we put power directly to this terminal, um, and ground, I think that we'll be able to, to actually get this thing to at least communicate and talk. So let's see. Okay. 
Let's go in. Have a seat. Go ahead, have a seat. Alright, so the key's right here. Seems like if you just push the clutch, you'll start the car. I don't know if that's really gonna happen. You can shut the door. Let's shut the door. Watch your head. Watch your hand. There we go. Okay. So it seems like everything would, is working. Can't even press the pedals. They're de they're there, right? Okay. So um, if you push the brake, right, and then push the clutch, oh, use the brake. <laughs> Here we. It's I'm sitting way too far back. I can't reach. It's okay. So let's see if it shifts into all gears. You just press and hold the brake. Reverse. That's reverse. Nice. This is the. Uh, the display, this is not a MyLink display. This is a, I don't know exactly what kind of a display it is, but it's not very useful to be honest with you. It needs uh, like uh, OnStar, it uses like OnStar in order to work. And I think, you know, you need an internet connection in order to get like Pandora, but there, there's no like, um, was it, what's that thing called? CarLink, Car, Car, CarLink I think it is? CarPlay, that's what it's called, it's called CarPlay. So there's none of that. <laughs> You're so nervous. Stop. <laughs> I don't want to be here. My foot's on the brake. Keep it on the brake. I just shifted it in the gear so you can take the foot off. Good. That's good. Okay. Oh, you know what? If you, now I turn the car off. Taking a look at everything, seems like it's been banged up pretty bad, but I don't think it's irreparable. There is a sensor in here, which I think is the crank position sensor. Looks like a couple of wires were frayed from the sensor there. That's a very easy fix. Um, what else? Thermostat, looks like we obviously in the thermostat housing, that's easy. Um, I don't see any cracks, right? I mean, this bracket uh, for the tensioner, for the hydraulic tensioner is busted. Um, but the, it seems like everything seems to spin freely with very little obstructions. I have, haven't tested the crank yet, but let's take a quick look. Seems, seems like it's moving pretty good. Got to come off here. Oh, you know what? The car's moving because I have it in gear. I was just spinning. I'm spinning it slowly, and the car's like slowly creeping on me. I'm like, why is it doing that? All right, just about all new pieces that should have been replaced have been replaced. We got a new air intake boot. We, knew, we got a new throttle body assembly. We got a new mass airflow sensor that I'm sticking right inside the intake boot for now. New belt tensioner with a belt and a new uh, solenoid uh, v uh, variable valve timing sensor assembly as well. So basically everything that's required to get this thing turning is in. All sensors and wiring for the engine harness is intact. So let's hook it up with power and let's see if this thing starts. Push clutch and start. Okay, I'm bringing the big guns out now and I've got 
a very expensive favor from a friend. So thank you so much for Joe V at uh, Joe V's Auto for providing me a Solace Edge snap-on scan tool, which should hopefully automatically detect the car and figure out exactly what car this is so I can detect which module it is not connected to. So I was able to find that there were two grounds that were actually not connected at all. So I reconnected them here to these locations that are basically on the frame rail. And when I connected this big one, uh, things started to click in the engine. Um, so I think that that's a pretty good sign. So let's go back and remeasure the codes. Okay, so now it auto ID'd on the tool. So that's always a good sign because it wasn't doing that before. So let's uh, click OK. Okay, let's try this again. Clear the codes. Codes cleared successfully. Awesome. So, okay, so now it's talking to the DME. Um, let's see if it starts. Let's try it again. Just turned it off because it went all the way to red line and that is not good. <laughs> all right, let's see what's going on. Okay, it's running, but it's a really, really bad. It's, it's shaken and it's in reduced power mode. So there are codes coming from this engine and we need to figure out what those are. So let's take a look and read through the codes and uh, get this thing set up. Hey guys, want to see something kind of funny on this LT1 here? Look what we got there. Look what we got there. A little friend just hanging out. We got to get him out of there. And how. There he is. There he is. Look, he's in there now. He's big. Wow, he's got some meat to him. Look at him in there. This is why I don't store my cars outside. All right, just put it into reduced engine power mode and it is shaking like a banshee. So something is off. Let's take a quick look. It's quite uncomfortable actually. Throttle body, mass airflow sensor, and that's it. So I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do there. All right, I think I figured it out, buddy. Right in there. You can't really see it too well, but on the intake manifold underneath that thing, that guy right there, cracked. So I gotta take the intake manifold off and inspect how bad it is. But overall, that is definitely a problem. I was spraying starter fluid in there and it was just, um, it was just, I actually killed the engine because it was so rich. So that's definitely the problem. Um, and uh, I'll take a quick evaluation of it, but I did see one on eBay for two to 300 bucks. Yay for vacuum leaks, yeah! We did it, me and my brother together. And we celebrated for weeks. So because we found a leak, a crack in the manifold right in there, we um, we need to take the manifold off and see if there's any other cracks that reside here. So I wanted to remove this stuff here, remove the uh, throttle body, uh, sensors, and anything else that might be attached to this thing and just lift it right off and see how bad the damage is. All right, taking a look at the underside of the manifold. You can see if there are, there definitely are some issues here. This guy here, crack right over here. You can also see something right in there. Crack here, kind of going around, kind of extends all the way over here. So I do recommend a new intake for sure. But what I'm gonna do for the purposes of getting this thing going, I wanna just JB weld this. And then I want to uh, reinstall it and see if it runs. But I think that we're going to end up getting a new, uh, new intake manifold here. All right, all the JB weld has been applied. I think I was pretty generous. Um, and uh, let's just, uh, let's reinstall this thing and see if it starts up. Well, if it runs good, I'm thinking that it's going to run just fine. I'm really excited to see how this thing turns out. So let's. Throw it on and start her up. All right, so we JB welded the intake manifold. We had to JB weld one other piece that was a vacuum line that we will end up replacing after we reinstall it into the new car. And 
I am ready for to do a first start. I am super excited about this because I know for a fact that that is what was causing the rough idle and what actually turned out to be a reduced power mode of the engine. So I could barely even keep it running, let alone move the thing under its own power. So let's turn the key, press the button, if you will, and let's get this thing started. I have a really good feeling about this. All right, guys, that just about does it for this E, this LT1 swap into a BMW E series chassis. I'm not gonna tell you which one it is. That's a surprise. For the next video, part two, where we reveal the chassis that this guy's going into, what we wanna do, and what my customer's power levels wants to be, um, and, and their overall take on what their uh, project will eventually become. Guys, this is gonna be a really cool project. I'm super excited to go through this in a new and entertaining and informative slash inspiring way. My name is Frank Macalusa from Garageaholic. I hope you enjoyed this so far and I hope you continue to tune in and tell your friends and comment and like and subscribe. Thank you very much guys. Have a great day. I am out of here. Later.